my dudes, Carter Bixby tripping. What are we got going on here today? We are testing out extremely low power modes right now in this very uh, tough Bitcoin market. So if you're out there mining right now, you know what we're talking about and very, very tight hash price you know, to maintain operations. And it's all about pulling back a little bit of that power usage to stay sustainable. And in different power deals, like if you're in three phase commercial power deals, you usually have like a minimum demand charge uh, because you set your demand at a certain rate and you're gonna pay it if you use it or not. It really depends on your area. But for like us, we have to maintain at least 1.5 megawatts on the one site that we have co-ownership of and we're looking right now with this market really being a low hash price on some of the remaining 104s that we have and we have some 95s too at that site um, how low can we pull them from an efficiency standpoint given the state of circumstances that the market's in right now ahead of us receiving the rest of the s21s and moving to something that's a little more tenable from a you know operation standpoint and Looking at, you know, 104s, uh, we got some 95s, uh, we got some 100s here. You guys can see the 100 here. Uh, the lowest ones we have is a 92. Um, and we've really been pulling a lot of the 92s out of there, 95s out of there, and just staying with the 100s and 104s uh, that until we get the rest of the S21s. And of course, you know, you know, we got S21 here. This one actually needs some work done to it. And then some of the uh, J Pro Pluses that are the 120s. Um, but looking at different modes today on what's the low power mode, the lowest power settings, like if you're using custom firmware, and this is if you're using Brains, Lux OS. Uh, we're using Vanish on this particular one, and I'll show you guys kind of where we're at. So on this one, 67.96 um, in total, we do have this kind of setting here set for 65 at a tuned 1740, which is essentially bringing this thing down. Here's essentially, if you're trying to do it manually, you're looking at about 12.1 at 350. We can pull these down a little further, but we it dropped, like I, I dropped this down to 12 and have this at 300. The board acts a little wonky and you get around 45. So there's, there's something that happens like after if you try to pull a whole bore down below 300 megahertz, it kind of just, it's like it's either a voltage issue, uh, it just isn't really stable and it tries to hold around 45 to 50. You do the algebra on that, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so that 1740 really is about the lowest. And the reported on the latest version of Anish, and I'll show you guys, this is the Alpha 126, Alpha 3 uh, version. It's showing 1864 on the estimated power on this one and uh, this is showing, uh, essentially it's, if you do the math here, it's about 27.7 joules. On some of the 100s, I've seen it as low as 26 joules per T, running those kind of efficient settings. So when we're looking for the most efficient, you can get uh, J Pro down to, looks around that 27, high 26 range on joules per T. So when you're doing your math to see if this makes sense for you, based on your power rate, because it's gonna be different for everybody on what your all-in power rate is. You know, that is pretty close. This bouncing around, this says 1903, 1902, and it goes down to 18, 1889. So it's off by about 25, 30 watts. And I think a lot of that's to do with the fans. Now, this is not making very much noise at all. Um, I can pull this, which turns off my fan here. And we can see It's barely making any noise. I could bring out the sound meter, but like this thing's at 2100 uh, RPM. They're just barely on, you know, so you're saving on your fans, you're saving the impact on, you know, heat and all that. Now, obviously it's getting to be fall in this area, but that's essentially kind of where we're at right now from, a, from just a whole um, industry standpoint. So everybody right now, all the shops out there, all the pubcos, are probably sitting in board meetings right now looking at max efficiency and what that so what's that macro look like for the industry 
what that looks like is you're still gonna have deployments happening. We still have some S21s coming, but so you're maximizing the already money spent as things start to show up to, to optimize your fleet and bring your total joules per T down. But on the legacy equipment, it's gonna be running it as low as possible if you're not already loading, running it as low as possible and then kind of breaking the mold on even you know, further bringing it down. Uh, to get as close to that 25, 24 joules per T as you can. Um, and like for all our all, all in rates, that's where it really needs to be. Um, but like if we have another five, 8% increase in Bitcoin difficulty, it's gonna, and with these current prices, then a lot of those uh, S19J pros and stuff, I'll probably have to get parked with just the the newer machines only running and then bringing up what we need to just to be in our minimum obligation. So that's the current state is about sustainability in the industry, why we're in a kind of a, a tight squeeze when it comes to the hash rate and stuff. And then just see, you know, this is one of those things that the Bitcoin is not affected, you know, from a operational standpoint, Bitcoin's going to still persevere. Um, it's the miners that contract around uh, what it is to sustain, right? So the network, the net effect is we'll see the network difficulty start to decline as people start to have to turn off less efficient machines and it the turning off supersedes the amount of new hash rate coming on. Even though the, the ratio right now is on a new machine you're looking at, you know, 200 T or 200 tera hash at, you know, 4,000 watts versus, you know, 100, Terra hash unit at you know 3200 watts so you know you're getting almost a doubling of the hash rate for the same amount of power that's the net of it right so um if one's replacing two and they have bought enough of the newer machines then yeah you could still see network difficulty clicking up a bit as those newer machines are kind of filling the slots and voids. And then I think the market in general will start to get a very interesting set of circumstances when it comes to the builder standpoint, um, where you might start seeing a lot of like either co-hosting um, options with people with much better power rates and or a subsidized type of situation where you're going to have like places like Bit, uh, Bitmain or some of these other vendors that actually have hardware and they'll start to look at some kind of subsidy deals where, you know, they're shooting in opportunity to send out new machines and then have some kind of fractional ownership, that kind of thing. So I think this market will do some very interesting thing when it's squeezed like this. Um, but there's only two real cool create, you know, factors that will start to change it. Bitcoin price going up, it really needs to almost double um, to see start a, a kind of a bullish trend, at least on the mining aspect. Um, you know, it really needs to be that 115, 117 range just to kind of stabilize the current setup. Not saying it needs to do that. It's just, it, that's the reality if you try to have the amount of participation that's here now uh, staying or difficulty is gonna start to just go down and then it's gonna be a rolling wave of people entering and exiting based on profitability. Um, and it's not just profitability, it's a matter of just sustaining. Like you got to pay for your power, you got to pay for people, you got to pay for all those things. So, um, like what what ends up laying out, um, and that's why like like our ter current situation. Because I know people send us messages like, "Hey, how are you guys holding up in this?" We are not a publicly traded company, so we don't have all those other requirements that are come with a publicly traded company. So we can get really really lean on everything, uh, and then our power deals that we've structured give us like a minimum demand charge of like let's say our five megawatt location of 1.5 megawatts is a requirement and then we can kind of set that you know at the start of a new month right so because if i just made the change today i'm still gonna have to pay for it in september of the whole month so it doesn't make a ton of sense to to, to ratchet it way down because my minimum peak demand is going to be high uh but like at the start of october if we're still in the same kind of situation you know we'll you have to take that kind of like, okay, here's the new approach. We got to ratchet everything down. Now that we've done the testing, we know what we can get to. What's that look like from a fleet management standpoint? And am I going to shed a full megawatt of cost, get more efficiency, and I'm getting, you know, maybe a 
30% drop in total power uh, cost, and then I'm gonna only lose, you know, 10% of my hash rate, 20% of my hash rate. And it's just an algebra problem to figure out, like, am, am I getting, that's where the efficiencies to come in. Because if you run these things, an S19J Pro um, 104 at full tilt, you know, you're at 33,000 watts on some of them, you're at 3,100, 3,200 watts on some others for 104, or you're at 1,700 watts, you know, 17 to 1,900 watts for, you know, almost 70 terahash. So you're only losing 30T, but almost half the power, right? So the that's the algebra that I'm talking about. So that that's when you get the best efficiency. You're going from 32 joules down to 27. And that's what you have to do. Even at home, my dudes, like if you're doing home mining and you're using it for heat, so you're subsidizing some of that extra power cost because you're paying 12, 14 cents per kilowatt. Um, and so it's worth it to you because you're earning some Bitcoin. You're going to pay the heat anyways. You do have a lot of those situations too um, where it just makes sense to continue to run a, a Bitcoin miner at home at 13 cents, right? Because you're just offsetting some costs there. So this is that type of, that's, the, hey, uh, you know, they don't call it, you know, wreck September for, for no reason. And then, uh, you know, uh, like every September, this is Bitcoin. Um, and then we usually see kind of a lift in October. Maybe it'll still occur, um, but hang in there, my dudes. It's all about just, you know, lean your operations down as much as possible and take a look at what you can do. Uh, everybody leaning will drop the difficulty some. So until next time, my dudes, peace.